Apparently, there's a lot of people online who really don't understand. So, <clears throat> as a Bible-believing preacher, my job is to rebuke false doctrine. Amen. Amen. So, a Bible-believing preacher, he is to make sure that when there is heresy or false doctrine out there, that he is supposed to show to people what's wrong with this. So he's supposed to show it's wrong. It is wrong right here. But a lot of people, what they assume is that when a Bible-believing preacher exposes false doctrine, they think what he's doing is that in the mind of people, they're like confused. They think that this is just trying to cause fights. Now, there are a bunch of people who think that they are Bible-believing preachers, and then they cause a lot of fights amongst the body of Christ, and then they act like jerks, and then because of that, that causes a circus and a riot, especially online, it's a bad testimony. So then, this is the problem for people. People are confused. People are confused, well, how do we know which one's right, which one's wrong? Now, this video is specifically for onlineers because this is, I'm going to give a general lesson to people here and then some, an additional thing for onlineers. Okay, one thing you got to understand onlineers is that if, you're, if you think that there's a bunch of Bible-believing preachers that you can watch online on YouTube, then you are dead wrong. That is very important to understand. Does that mean that I'm the only Bible-believing preacher who's right and everybody is wrong? No. I come from a long line and a rich line. There's a lot of us Bible-believing preachers around the world. But you got to understand this. Is that, so let me give a little bit of a... I've been in online and I've seen a lot of this thing for a while. So I'm going to explain the difference right here and then a little bit of online history. Okay, So this is quite a unique lesson that I'm going to give. So the idea here is that with online... Bible-believing pastors, you got to understand this. So it's a little bit of a fresh review. Modernism, when it was rising that time, there was a lot of heresy going around in churches. The churches were falling into apostasy that time. So then uh, let me just draw some churches here. That way it doesn't get confusing for some people. So these are little churches, okay? So these churches at time, modernism was sinking in, the churches. So this is a little bit of your history. Now, during this time, there was a group who conquered or tried to fight against this group. These are called the fundamentalists. Christian fundamentalists, these started to try to fight against the modernism those days. So there was this conflict that time. So we know that during this time that the Christian fundamentalists were the right group of people. Now the Christian fundamentalists during this time period, what you're going to find out, they consist mostly of independent fundamental Baptist church. Independent fundamental Baptist, otherwise known as the IFB. Now, when the Christian fundamentalists came out, originally there were a few Methodists and there were different denominations, Congregationalists, etc., who joined the Christian fundamentalists. R.A. Torrey was the one who started the doctrines of the fundamentals. And then J. Frank Norris was the guy who started the independent Baptist group. Then from J. Frank Norris, what happened with the independent fundamental Baptist groups, then the Lord, he was raising up more and more fundamentalists that time. The fundamentalists that time, there were two key doctrines that made the whole difference, or there were three main areas, which is very important. Three main areas, how you knew which group was the right group of people, is when you look at the history. The history was the fundamentalists that time. As you continually look throughout history, there were three main 
doctrines how you know which group among here was right. It was the doctrine concerning the King James Bible being perfect. The other one was dispensationalism. The third point was when they grew deeper into doctrine. Now, I'm going to add a fourth point here, and that's IFB, Independent Fundamental Baptist. These are the four clear distinctions how you knew you were in the right group. I am giving a historical standpoint and then the scriptural standpoint. Okay, what's the scriptural standpoint? So, what I would advise is to watch my playlist. I have a playlist called Defending the KJV and then another playlist called Dispensationalism. I would advise for you to watch those two playlists and then you'll realize why the King James Bible only issue as well as dispensationalism is right. Now, deep doctrine, the problem with the IFB churches is they were afraid to study more into doctrine. Whereas the problem is the charismatics as well as the Calvinists as well as the some other people out there. Mo mostly, though, I notice these are people who are non-denominational or charismatic groups. They were the ones who were not afraid to get more into deep doctrine. So then, what's famous online, for example, is like the conspiracy stuff, right? This kind of stuff is not something strange to us Bible-believing preachers because we weren't afraid to go deep into doctrine. So we studied the conspiracy stuff out there. But not only that, all kinds of stuff in the Bible that were very deep that time. So we studied about the mark of the beast. We also weren't afraid to study some other things like blue blood aliens. You might go, what is that? Uh, what kind of fruit that Adam and Eve ate in the garden? We also studied uh, more concerning about the interesting concerning the tribes of Israel. And then we also studied some things concerning uh, UFOs in the Bible. And then uh, the frozen deeps and then also the pyramid shape of the universe, and then blah, blah, blah. So uh, the path of the second advent, Armageddon, blah, 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 all those are deep doctrines. So we weren't afraid to study those things. But another thing is that we have our history. This is so important. Our history is independent fundamental Baptist. So there's a thing which we believe. Look, if you study more on the Bible, then what's going to happen? Then you're going to grow more in knowledge, right? So thus, there's a thing, we have a history. This is our history. But we believe through this history that there is a progressive revelation. It's not all going to be the same. As you study more and more in the book, your knowledge of the Bible will grow more and more. So progressive revelation. What is progressive revelation? As God reveals more and more things in the Bible, you're going to study more and more. And you're going to find more truths in that book. So if you have this history, this source, this crowd, at the same time, though, you study more and more in the book, these are the four main areas how you know you're in the right crowd. So a lot of people would say, well, how do you know which crowd is right? And then I would point these four out to them. But then a lot of people don't know what kind of churches they are. So, the simple, so we've given you our resources link. In our resources link, we list all the Bible-believing churches in there and then you can fellowship with these people. So they believe like we do. Now, the thing is this, though, is that uh, our resources site is temporarily down for now. So I'm sorry, I can't give you those churches for now. <laughs> but the idea is, is that if you look through this, then you know which group that you're in the right group. Now, that's concerning online. Unfortunately, our concerning as a church, a Bible-believing local church, I'm not talking about individuals, okay? A lot of individuals can run big channels. And what's very surprising is that a lot of those individuals who know about these four issues, you know what they're going to borrow it from. They borrowed it from our crowd, you got to understand. So then, we call ourselves Bible believers. That's what we're called, Bible believers. But you'll notice that there are anti-KJV people. There are also Calvinists. There are also Calvin, uh, Charismatics who call themselves Bible believers. There's also a group who come from the independent fundamental Baptist, but then they go rogue. And because they go rogue, they deny dispensationalism. 
they, they hate deep doctrines and call it crazy and weird. So then they go into anti-dispensational mode. So you got to watch out for these guys too. So those guys who call themselves New Independent Fundamental Baptist or New IFB, they are a cultic fringe. They are not part of this group. Amen. But us Bible-believing preachers, we are from this line. This is our history. We just added more things and studied more things. So then, this is our line. So these are the key players. I forgot one more key player, which is Ruckman. So Ruckman, he also came from this line. He was approved by the Independent Fundamental Baptist Church. So Bob Jones Sr. called him the most brilliant man who walked on campus. Buchamp Vick, who was a, a branch from J. Frank Norris and started his own uh, ministry and group organization, called him the most brilliant man who ever lived. Hugh F. Pyle, who was uh, one of the key players in the Independent Fundamental Baptist Preachers, he actually dedicated a whole chapter in his biography concerning Dr. Ruckman. You also got to understand this. There are big people online who learn from Dr. Ruckman. You got to understand that. So then uh, I'm, gonna, uh, I'm just going to ignore some names, but I'm going to mention some names here who you probably heard online, but they were all, uh, they, they were all connected and friends with Dr. Ruckman and then had his support. So then you have Sam Gipp, for example. Then you have another one named David Peacock. Then you have another one, Gail Ripplinger, who was famous for New Age Bible versions. Jack Chick, very close friends with Dr. Ruckman. He also talked to him at his beginnings concerning some theological questions when he wrote his tracts. So Jack Chick, Chick Publications. And then uh, Charles Lawson, he actually took uh, Ruckman's book, Black is Beautiful, and we know Charles Lawson, he's been famous concerning his conspiracy stuff a long time ago. But then he took Dr. Ruckman's book, Black is Beautiful, and said, this man was way ahead of his time. And Dr. Ruckman wrote Black is Beautiful long before Lawson taught that stuff online. It was during the 90s that time, so Dr. Ruckman was talking about it. So before the conspiracy stuff came out online, Dr. Ruckman was way ahead, you gotta understand. So you gotta understand, this is our kind of group and people that we came from, see? This is where we came from. But these are the four main distinctions. We have a history of independent fundamental Baptist. We're not afraid to study more into doctrine. We believe in dispensationalism and the King James Bible issue. The thing is, is that when you get, so the danger is this. The danger is that how we know that there is fighting where people nitpick on certain doctrines and pick fights with each other is when there are people who are from this group but then what they do is that they like to nitpick Bible believing preachers here and then they like to nitpick Bible believing preachers right here and say well he's wrong about this he's wrong about that and then what they do is that they start their own little movement as a result and how we know that these guys are rogue people is this. One, you just look at their history. Do they have people in here who approved of them? So here goes a rogue guy, right? So he's screaming, you know, I'm the man of God over here. And then his members just can't wait to throw out a member. One of them almost knocks over a baby. And then all of them, of course, have beards. But aside from that, so of course, there's nothing wrong with the beard, all right? I wish I grew a beard myself, okay? But anyway, the thing is this. Yeah, we got one amen from a bearded individual here. But I'm just talking about these people that just try to pretend to show off masculinity. Yeah. And then because of that, what, it's not a sign of masculinity. It's a sign of being a jerk. So these people, they learn from this group. They're raised from this group. But then they rebel against this group. And then they start their own little movement. Thus, you know you're in a cult. A cult is they come from this bunch, but then they want to start their own little gig. How do you know that? Is when you got, so remember, when God laid down the church, a church consists of pastors. You got to understand this. These guys would not have learned had it not been for their pastors to begin with who taught them the Bible. How you know they're rogue is that the same people who were taught under pastors start to rebel against them because they think they're smarter. If you think you're so much more smart and you're smarter, then you did not have to be taught by them to begin with. Mm -hmm. You get all prideful yeah. and rebellious learning from these guys, and then you go, 
oh, but no, he's heretical for teaching that. He's wrong, and I'm going to start my own little gig. And then guess what? All these pastors don't approve these guys. How do you know that you're under a quack doctor, for example? How do you know that you're under a quack teacher? When other, the other teachers around them or other doctors around them or the scientists around them, or even if you're in a crowd, how do you know you have a quacky person in the crowd? Is that if that person doesn't go with the other people, how do you know that this guy's rogue, he's a cult? What do other Bible-believing pastors think about that person? That's how you can tell. How you can tell which one's a really rogue guy, really wacky and kooky, is what do other Bible-believing pastors think? Yeah, that's good. How do you know you're under a quack doctor? How do you, uh, what do other doctors think about it? How do you know that you're talking to a quacky person? How do other people feel about that person yeah. when they talk to that person? That's just normal common sense. Even psychologists talk about that. They talk about a lot of abstracts. So then there are abstract areas, see? So then, does this mean all pastors agree with each other? No, Bible-believing pastors, especially when you study that book, we come up with different beliefs. That proves we're not under a cult. How do you know that we're not under a cult? Because we all do not agree and teach like all three of these men. There's always differences. There's always differences. That's how we know you're not under a cult. How you know you're really under a cult is that when you have a different doctrine and then they throw you out yep. and they call you lost. Amen. So when there are differences over here, what happens? This picture does not change. He's still screaming, I'm the man of God here, you know, and all that. And then he'll call you lost. And then he'll call you a heretic. How you know you're in a cult? When this guy thinks that, oh, I can be different from them, but then when you differ from him, then he calls you a cult. Mm -hmm. mm, that's, good. that's how you know you're in a cult. How do you not know you're in a cult? When we recognize that there are differences, but we try to unite together. Mm -hmm. See, that's how you know that you're not in a cult. That's what majority of uh, people do nowadays, and scholars, medical doctors, teachers, and etc. Do all teachers and scholars and people, even regular people, do they all agree with each other? No, we all have differences. But how you know that, uh, that they're sane and that they're okay and how we function as a society is that what do we do? We try to get along with each other. We've set aside the differences. We're independent. We're not under a cult because we know that we have the freedom to think and believe for ourselves. But we know that we're not some blind slave under a cult because while we recognize differences, we also try to maintain the unity. So we know that we're not some kooky re rebel rogue either. A kooky rebel rogue is, well, you know, you should respect my differences, you know. I'm not under a cult pastor, so I'm going to differ from them. Uh -huh. But when you differ from him, then he's going to say, you're a cult. Uh -huh. See, you know what that is? That's so much egotism and pride. Yep. That's how you know you're in the right. How do I know that I'm in the right? You criticize all kind of pastors out there. Simple. Find these four areas. They're not from these four areas. That's why I know that. So I point them out with hesitation to heresy. It's no doubt. Am I different from all these men? Definitely. And by the way, how many videos do you think I have online? You don't think you're going to find, you think everyone's going to agree with me with 2,000 plus videos that I put online? You crazy, man. No, there's a lot of things I teach over there. You don't think there's going to be differences? There's going to be 2,000 differences probably with 2,000 videos, especially when you go into deep doctrine and abstract areas. You don't think that there's going to be differences? Why did Pastor Kim teach about that and that? That's so controversial. Because that's what distinguishes us from being a cult from being baby Christians. We're not afraid to study deeper into the Bible. By the way, every single, I know some people out there, you know, they think that I'm some heretic, but you guys are just hypocrites yourselves because let me tell you something. Every single deep doctrine that has been considered a controversy online, I have learned it from these Bible-believing preachers. Yep. That was not something that I taught you from my own mind. All right, now you go home and pray about that for a while. 
For example, Matthew chapter 5, if thy right hand offend thee, cut it off. And then that's application for the tribulation. And then people think that I'm a heretic for teaching that. No, you got to understand this. I learned this from Pastor Mike Schreibe. By the way, other Bible-believing pastors have taught that as well, concerning chopping off your head and then chopping off your right hand. And by the way, you know why? Because this was also taught by Dr. Ruckman. Now, concerning about the antennas being the mark of the beast, television antennas be, being the mark of the beast, that's not something that I taught or made up. You got to realize Lester Roloff, who's a famous independent fundamental Baptist preacher, taught that. Now, you got to realize this. See, so this is something that Mr. Quack did not make up. Another thing, Cain and Abel were twins. And then concerning that ye are of your father the devil, the lust of your father ye will do, it's possible it may be referring literally from Satan's line. That's not something that I taught or made up. That was something that I learned from Dr. Ruckman's commentaries. Now, see, these are people who, okay, you're going to go, oh, oh, no, he doesn't teach that. And oh, oh, okay, see, how I know you're a cult also is that you don't know these people. You know how I know you're a cult? You don't know these people. I know all these different fundamentalist camps and Bible-believing pastors. So then I named you a couple and told you, uh, I named you a few, right? And then how they mention about uh, these other Bible-believing preachers or about Ruckman and Jack Chicken, etc. How, how did I know all that? Because I'm not some weird little kook. I'm from this group. I fellowship with this group. I learn from this group. How we know you're a cult is that you don't know what's going on. And then you think that Gene Kim is the only weird guy who teaches Ruckman stuff in California. Oh, I don't know of any uh, people who study Ruckman stuff in California except Gene. We got Gene Kim over here, but I don't think he has more than three people and stuff like that. You got, you're a cult, man. Yeah. You don't even know. People, people think that the preachers who are online, that those are the famous Bible-believing no. preachers. No. Bible-believing preachers, you got to understand concerning online. Why aren't we all over online? Simple. Our job is not the internet. Our job is people and souls. Amen. Dealing with actual real live people. That's our history. Yeah. Real life people. Souls. This internet thing is not, uh, it's only recent, you gotta understand. It's only recent. So the reason why people think that I'm famous and popular, I'm not, okay? I'm just, one of the, uh, I'm just one of the smallest Bible-believing preachers, to, you got to understand. Yeah. Smallest Bible-believing churches. I have a bunch of other small-time small uh, Bible-believing preachers, and they're the ones who encourage me, and I encourage them. But uh, you think I'm famous because I'm online. If you, th if you judge famous big-time preachers by online, you don't know. That's right. See, that's, then you're, you're in your own little world, probably. And maybe that's why you come your own little cult and you start your own little channel. And then you pick fights with each other. No. You got to pick the right fights. See? Is fighting wrong? No. Christians should fight. That's what the Bible said. But there are Christians who fight amongst each other and act like jerks and then it looks like a carnival circus. So there's a thing called right fighting. You got to pick your right fights. How do you know that? You got to know who your right team is. You know what these guys are? They aren't teams. They want to make their own team. If, how do you know the guy's in a cult when he makes up his own team? How these people like to cover their tracks as being a cult is that, oh no, I got other Bible-believing pastors who yeah. believe like I do. I got other channels who believe like I do. No, you know who they are? Those guys aren't Bible-believing pastors who submitted under older pastors no. before them. You gotta understand this. We come not from a kooky, weird little cult thing. It has always been the bot. How do you know you're in the right kind of church? That's what church is, a called out assembly. And a church is run by Bible-believing pastors before you. Yep. So that's how you know you're in the right team. How do I know that we're in a kooky cult and I'm picking unnecessary fights amongst the body of Christ? Very simple. How you know that is that if you go outside of this and then where you find differences with each other, then you pick a fight. But this group, when they find differences, they still maintain the unity. We've maintained the unity of our differences, but we know that the people who don't believe in these 
We get on them. That's how we know that we're the Bible-believing preacher who exposes false doctrine. What's sad is that nearly every street preaching YouTube channel out there is heresy. Yep. Nearly every, uh, so that's why those guys, Ray Comfort, Todd Friel from Wretched, Jeff Durbin from Apologia Studios, those guys who do actual soul winning witnessing that you watch online, they're all lordship, salvation, heresy. That's right. So that's why we know that they're all wrong. Why is those street preaching channels wrong? It's because they teach lordship, salvation, heresy, where they emphasize so, so much on a repentance of sin that you have to give up this sin and this sin and this sin, then you're really saved. No, you have to put faith in Jesus Christ. Amen. Let him take care of your sin problem. Amen. Do we belittle repentance? No, we believe repentance is necessary. But repentance leads to belief. When you repent as a sinner, you realize I can't clean up my sins myself. All I can do is put my faith on Jesus Amen. Christ. Will you take care of these sins for, for me, Heavenly Father? And when, after he gets saved in Jesus Christ, that flesh... Can, it is very possible that he can commit the most wicked sins and you can even grow in it more. That is a matter of fact. And that is the difference with us from those Calvinist channels and those uh, street preachers out there. Uh, there's only one street preacher I recommend because he's from here, from this crowd. His name is Jack Crailer, Dream Amen. Team for Amen. Christ. Amen. See, a lot of you never heard about that. Now go over to his channel and subscribe to him. Yeah. Amen. You might say... Well, pastor, this is so bad. There needs to be more of you online. Praise the Lord. Amen. Can you go start attending those Bible-believing churches in our resources link then? Yeah. Once it's uploaded, temporarily it's down, but <laughs> once it's uploaded, can you please go to them and then start to encourage them, promote their ministries, put uh, their material online for them? You got to realize those pastors are not tech savvy because all the time they've been focusing on building a church working with people not online yeah. online is not easy my people know that Amen. pastors do not have time to spend online trust Amen. me it's a lot of work you understand this too is that uh, pastor charles lawson is that his group is not responsible for his own channel mm -hmm. it was some other person out there who willingly helped him out yeah. that's why the lord blessed his internet ministry so why don't you people start doing that too with these other Bible-believing preachers? Amen. See, Go to their church, help them out, help them online. Because my online thing, I had to do it myself and then teach other people to do that. Pastors don't have that kind of dedication and time to do it. But I did it because I'm so grieved by the heresy online. And you people think that the truth is found what you see online. That broke my heart. The truth is found in the Word of God. That's right. But it was not being promoted online. That's why I went online for you guys. Yeah. All right? I'm not some weird cultic fringe. I'm a Bible-believing pastor who has a burden for souls, want to get you to the right group of people. Now, if you still think that I'm a cult or what I'm teaching you is wrong, then my evidence is the people online who watched me for over a year and followed my discipleship videos yep. and went to a Bible-believing church, Amen. and they will be the evidence to you that they're... That, they, that it's best that I was not stick to an online virtual world. Amen. And the people in my church are even greater evidence themselves. Amen. They were onliners too like you. Amen. But they will tell you for a fact yep. that it is better to attend a Bible-believing church yes, and that's how they grew faster than just watching online. Amen. And they will also be the evidence to you that when you watch all these people online, it will just be more confusing. Yes. It, that's why you guys are all confused, see, because everyone's pointing each other to be a heretic. Yeah. The key is, see, is that I've already given you a history and everything. These are the four keys that would have helped a lot.